this. So after this, <laughs> oh, I see your heart. Thank you, Miko. So after we have the diaphragm, deepest layer, hip flexors, the layer on top, transverse abs, third layer. The fourth would be a double one, and that's the obliques. It's like a cross running over the previous layer. So we have an X running from the ribs to the opposite side of the pelvis. And if you read books, <laughs> you might see them as upper obliques and lower obliques. Hi, hello, Helene. But actually the fibers, they are separated here by the linea alba, continue on the other side. So it's a movement pattern, the upper obliques on one side, work together with the lower obliques on the other. So you could see this as one band and then one here. Only these are the top and the others go deeper. Yes, it is. I'm, I'm a bit of a geek for movement, but it has actually helped me also to move better, to train with more consciousness. <laughs> so I hope it may be of help for some of you too. As said before, if you want to go deeper, you can take my workshop on 21st of November, I'll get the recordings. If you sign up for the Tip Drops membership, which is free, you can do the workshop for free as well. And if you sign up for my Boost 2021 program, you also get the workshop for free. Hi Karin, welcome. So I'll put the links down here as soon as I finish, but let's first, let's move first. So the obliques, the diagonal ab muscles, most of you know them, but I did not know that it was actually the upper and lower one team on each side. And these you can also feel with lateral movements, sliding the chest, sliding the hips, as well as twist. Because it runs like this, you would feel opening and contraction with slides, but also when you twist. Makes sense, because it lengthens and shortens like this, but also like this. Playing with this is very good for drum solos. So let's find them. Find your ribs. I walk down, not the floaty ones, but the ones the last real ribs, the ones that connect to your sternum, walk in two steps and slide your rib cage. If you don't feel it, you can walk a bit lower along the same line, sliding, or walk a bit out. So it's in this area, side to side. And if all goes well, the upper ones, when sliding the chest, you feel it on the opposite side. When I slide there, I feel them here. Yes? I hope so, yes. If you slide the hips, you feel it on the same side because it's a diagonal line. So if I slide there, the resistance will be on the opposite finger. If I slide my hip out, it will be when the hip goes in the same direction. Same thing when you go to the lower obliques, which are hands on the hips, where the fingers end, press deep, slide the chest, You'll feel it on the opposite side, so a bit of resistance against the fingers, hopefully. And as you slide the hips, it's on the same side. If I slide right, I feel it here. That's my right. If I slide my left, I feel it here. Chest, it's the opposite. Yes. <laughs> I'll have fingerprints all over my belly, as so will you. So that's where it works. Try a twist. For me, I feel it on the same side. When I go up, upper body, opposite side. All right, so we have diaphragm, deepest layer, hip, flex hip flexors, or um, running on top of them, transverse abs, running from the back actually to the front, and now the obliques like an X on top of that. Two, strength and obliques, there's many, many exercises, but one that I feel really deeply, and it helps me with side kicks for Taekwondo, this I learned in a ballet workshop. So it's good to have cross training, uh, input from different, different sides. So I want you to try this one, because that helps me, and it helped my husband to feel it work. The setup is a bit, um, <laughs> not complicated, but hard to explain in words, so I hope you can see it. I have my legs bent, I'm on the floor, and my rib cage, I twist it and I slide it to the side. So from here, I'll show you. I slide it to the side of my chest and then I twist and that's my starting position. So again, on the other side, I slide my chest to the side and then I tilt it. So my rib cage and hips come together. 
from this awkward position, so I slide and I tilt, the hand on this side will reach for the opposite knee. And I don't really, I don't <laughs> yank myself up. What I do is I scoop under and from below I try to put the back of my fingernails on my knee. And from there, to not use my neck muscles instead of my abs, I use my free hand to support my head and I try to make my head heavy. And this is super important. The more you can relax your neck, the more you will learn to isolate and use your abdominals without using your face and your head and your dancing will look and feel more relaxed. So even, even while you're doing this, it's not about how many repetitions you do, it's how, how consciously you do it and how much you are able to relax what doesn't need to work. And then your practice goes deeper and will be a lot more efficient. So from here, <laughs> I hope this made sense. I'm sliding my ribcage to one side. I tilt down on that side. That arm goes to the opposite knee and my free hand supports my head. I just let it lay down. I have to remind myself to do this. And then I try to reach for my knee, but not over. I reach under, under. My shoulder goes down to the floor and from there I reach and it gives me a good deep <laughs> I feel something and this you can do five times for the challenge we will do more other side the same can you feel this can you tell me if you feel this hi Davine hi Sabine yes okay other side I hope you can feel this I know if you're on the floor you cannot type so first I slide my ribcage to the side or someone wrote on something Hi Maria, welcome. Welcome from the north. <laughs> so I slide to the side, I tilt, and then this arm that is tilted low reaches for the opposite knee. But I don't go over, I go under. And I support my head with my free hand. I'm looking at the ceiling. I'm not even looking at my knee. And I'm not able to reach my knee. <laughs> I'm not that freakishly uh, <laughs> flexible yet. But I feel it. I go, if I don't feel it, I might be crossing over. If I scoop under, I'm aiming for under my knee, then I feel it a lot more and I cannot go as high up. And that's a great way to wake up your obliques on the side. So a bit more on the side than when you do the bicycle. The bicycle is a really good one, but it goes a bit more across in the front. If you want to feel the sides, which are fibers that we sometimes don't really target with the regular ab exercises. I recommend doing a combination of different ones. But this one, for me, found some fibers that were not active before. Okay, let's do one more for the obliques, because different people feel it in different ways. And this one I learned from Monica Volkmar of Canada. She's a very good movement specialist. For this, we are going to stabilize our hips. I have my shin lined up with the mat and it's 90 degrees. So a 90 degree angle, my foot is flexed. 90, 90, 90 degrees. I try to sit straight. I may fall a bit to the side, so I support myself with my hand to start. This leg, I bring it back, so it's also a 90 degree angle here. And again, this pushes me a bit towards this side, which is normal. Shin is parallel with this foot, foot is flexed. All of this to put me in a nice and stable position. From there, where my hip is, where my hand is, I walk out and I place my elbow right under my arm. Here, if I let myself hang, my ear and my shoulder will meet, I pull away and already I feel a bit of activation under my armpit. But that's not yet the exercise, that's a preparation. So I pull away, you can do this a couple of times. It's a good shoulder exercise. You keep this distance. Now the exercise comes, the free hand reaches to the front and you imagine something that you really want. Uh, world peace, <laughs> health for everyone. You reach for it so much that your hip leaves the floor without the feet moving. So you reach and you come back. You rotate and reach, you come back reach even further and you come back so my lower hip kind of floats but I'm not cheating with the feet let's do two more last one 
and you smile. And the last two are the ones that I feel, and this is what I recommend people figuring out how many repetitions of an exercise to do. Yes, um, I recommend just feeling yourself which, which side, how early do you feel it. If you feel it, do a couple more with feeling. And if the other side you don't feel it until you do more, do a couple until you feel it in there. The part that needs a bit more strength, you start with that one, then you go to the stronger side, and then you go back to the first one, and this way you can even it out. It's very good to know if one side you feel more than the other, because knowing this already helps to balance it out. A lot of our posture issues are just matters of losing connection a bit and reconnecting. It will tell you a lot, but it already starts changing it. Same thing here. 90 degrees, a lot of talking. Parallel with the mat, perpendicular with the mat, foot is flexed. I bring this knee back so it's 90 degrees here as well. 90 degrees here, so my heel comes to the front. It looks like it's. I support myself with my hand. I walk out the same line as my hips, elbows down. And this is a small side plank. If you do side planks and then try to turn out, that's what I was talking about. It will help you with the hip rotators. Let's do a couple of shoulder pushaways. Shoulder push away. I'm pressing it down and making space here. Keep it. Free hand reaches for whatever you want for yourself and the world and your loved ones. Reach so far that it's a stretch in your shoulder and then reach further so you have to lift this hip off the floor and come back. Lift this hip. We're using body weight training. And it's, it also it doesn't look like much, but when you do it, for me, starting five times, I start feeling a little, little but my other side is the one that I feel it earlier. So make note of this. This is very good to know, and it will get stronger and more even pretty fast. So one more, one more. This one, I need to do a couple more to feel it. Yes. Okay. So those two exercises are very good ones to warm up and activate, wake up your obliques. Yes, thank you, thank you so much. I like, <laughs> I like spreading knowledge because it helps dancers for the rest of their lives. Once you know it, you can give this information to others and also you can do any training that you do with more understanding and that makes everything more efficient. Hi, Damien. Okay, one more thing.